Welcome to Fun with Drilling Engineering. Have you ever drilled a hole in your wall at home? In theory, this is very simple. You select a drill bit with the required diameter. You drill a hole in the wall. You press a dowel in. And when you finally insert the screw and tighten it, the dowel anchors in the hole and you are done. In deep drilling operations, many things are pretty similar. You take a drill bit with the right diameter and drill the borehole. Then you run a casing string and cement it firmly in place and the hole is ready for use. When performing the cement job, you have to make sure that the cement column in the analog reaches high enough into the previous casing string so that the entire borehole is fully sealed against the surrounding formation and nothing can get out of the borehole into the environment and vice versa. So it's really important that the cement head reaches the proper position in the analog. Well, all that is pure theory. In practice, everything is different. I'm sure most people have experienced that drilling into a wall can have catastrophic consequences. Usually the hole in the wall will resemble a kind of crater, dead everywhere on the floor, on the sofa, not to the delight of our dear wives. Of course, the same thing happens with deep drilling in the earth. It is common that the borehole ends up much larger than expected. Then the cement slurry flows into the excess volume of the borehole and this results in a situation where the cement head does not reach the desired height. This is of course a big problem. Therefore, it is mandatory to measure the diameter of the borehole along its steps before the casing string is run into the borehole. From the diameter log, we can precisely calculate how much cement we need to fill the analogs. The diameter log is provided by a wireline service. Here you can see a wireline truck, which is basically a truck with a winch, and on the winch there's a long cord steel cable, which is the wireline. On the free end of the wireline, we can attach any wireline measuring tool to run into the borehole. In our case, we use a caliper sensor. Here we see two different models. Their function can easily be explained. A caliper tool has four or more fingers, arms, which are preloaded with springs so that they are always pressed outwards against the borehole wall. As you lower down the tool, these fingers slide along the borehole wall and take the exact diameter of the borehole along its length. The whole measurement finally results in a caliper log, just like the one you see here behind me. This is what the borehole actually looks like. And with this log, we can now calculate how much cement is needed for the cement job. A caliper log also allows conclusions to be drawn on the quality of the borehole. Let's start from an ideal borehole. In an ideal round gauge borehole, the measurement curves all look the same as you can see behind me. However, if we decrease the density of our drilling mode so that the pressure in the borehole gets too low, then the borehole becomes unstable and the high formation pressure on the outside acts on the borehole and deforms it, as you can see here, as I simulate with this cupboard. This deformation finally leads to breakouts on two sides of the borehole. These breakouts can clearly be seen in the caliper log here. Do you remember this crater borehole that we saw earlier in our living room? You can of course have such an over gauge borehole section in the caliper log because the diameter indication is too large on all the measurement curves. They indicate that the borehole suffers from washouts. Or sometimes you can see a key seat has formed. This happens when the rotating drill string in a cuff section is rubbing against the inner wall of the borehole and finally work its way into the side of the wall. A key seat also results in a very typical measuring curve in the caliper log, as you see here. Yes, and from this we can see that with little brain power, very interesting conclusions can be drawn from simple measurements. You will learn this and a lot more in our lecture, Basics of Drilling Engineering. And there are still a few more chairs free here. We look forward to having you at Freiburg. Look off.